Gracias, Rosa. Well, but uh, last but not least, I'm going to introduce you the last speakers of this uh, afternoon. They are going to present under the title Essential EU Law in Charts, Applying Legal Design Thinking and Legal Visualization to Facilitate Understanding of EU Law, and in particular, EU Digital Regulation. Um, Jax Beglinger, he is an attorney at law, registered at the Bar of Zurich, Switzerland, and professional consultant in the areas of law, policy, and compliance. He's also co-secretary of the Swiss EGF, uh, the Swiss instance of the United Nations Internet Governance Forum, a guest lecturer at the University of Leiden on digital regulation and member of various professional commissions in the field of dig digitalization. From 2012 to 2020, he was member of the executive board of the Swiss Holdings, which is the uh, federal Federation of Swiss-based multinational enterprises, where he was responsible, among other things, of the working group on compliance and where he accompanied the international and national data uh, protection revisions. He studied in Zurich, France, and in the USA, and from 1991 to 2002, worked as a senior legal counsel uh, in a global operating technology company and from 2002 to 2011 and practiced law at the bar of Zurich, specializing in digital law and data protection. He is, uh, as of uh, 2006, he acted as a secretary of the Swiss uh, Association for Corporate da Data Protection and he served uh, also as uh, co-chair in the Commission of Digital Economy of the International Chamber of uh, Commerce, the World Business Organization, and represented in this capacity as an official observer uh, the interest of digital businesses at the Council of Europe in Strasbourg, uh, still today representing uh, the large uh, reinsurance company Swiss Re. And apart uh, from this Essential EU Law in Chart, his, uh, and its companion book Essential EU Law in Text, his uh, professional writing includes, in particular, the co-authoring of a book on electronic records management and the Swiss uh, country reports on EU's digital internal market and on the implementation of the EU data protection principles uh, for the 5D conference, uh, Federation International the Dr Drought European. And Professor Tobler, Welcome. Uh, she is professor of European law at the University of Basel in Switzerland and Leiden in the Netherlands. She studied law at the University of Zurich in Switzerland, where she obtained her law degree in 1985. And in 1989, she was awarded a PhD based on a thesis on Swiss trademark law. Professor Tobler uh, subsequently worked as a researcher in the Kyoto uh, Comparative Law Center in Japan and as court clerk in Switzerland. In 1992, she passed the Zurich Bar exam and then uh, for a short time worked as an attorney in law. In 1994, she was awarded the degree in uh, an LLM in international, uh, sorry, in the European Community Law at the University of Leiden. And during her studies in Leiden, she was was also the winner of the advocate uh, winning advocate general in the European Law Moot Court competition. Thereafter, Professor Tobler spent the first half of 1995 as a researcher in the uh, uh, in an inter interdisciplinary research program at the Univer European University Institute in Florence, Italy. And as of 1995. She worked at Leiden University and as uh, of 1998 also Basel University. In 2005, she was appointed professor of European law at the University of Basel and in 2007 at the University of Leiden. Professor Tobler has two research specializations, namely the legal uh, equality and discrimination, both in economic and in social law, and second, the legal relationship between Switzerland and the European Union, seen against the background of other external relations regimes of the European Union with non-member states, in particular in the form of, of association regimes. 
She is a member of the Executive Committee of Senior Experts of the European Equality Law Network and member of the Editorial Board of the Swiss Review of International and European Law. And she's also an enthusiastic moot court judge in a regional level for the European Law uh, Moot Court Competition and co-founder of the EU Law in Charge project, which aims at using visualization in the legal teaching. So uh, the floor is yours. I'm very much looking forward to, to hear you. Well, hello, everybody. Me from Zurich and Christa Tobler from Leiden, yeah. from the Netherlands in fact, yes. Yes, uh, well, we are very happy to present here what we developed uh, on uh, visualization in European law. And uh, just to, before I start with a, a presentation, I would just uh, make sure that uh, that you understand where this is all coming from, uh, from our side. We are professionals with uh, being active from quite some time, but what always was a problem for us was how to find the best way to tell other students or business partners or other parties in court what we really mean. And we discovered that using visualization so uh, digital well, or and or digital means uh, is works mostly best. So what we are going to talk about now is how these two books are came into being and what the concept was behind. Now I'm going to share my screen. I hope this works as smooth as it should. Can it be? Is it? Yes. yes visible. It. Yeah. It just put it in presentation mode. It's not in presentation mode at the yeah. moment. Yes. So here we go. Well, the vision that we had behind uh, our project was that we discovered there are basically four younger generations around that need a different approach than just books. So we, we discovered, and you can see this is 20 years old already, we started with the generation internet. Now, the generation internet expects to find most relevant information on a single page, not on several pages in a book, and to follow hyperlinks, which may, in a chaotic way, lead to more information. We also discovered that there is the generation Instagram or TikTok. Students of the Instagram TikTok age, they understand and memorize graphic structures much better than texts. On the business side, we have generation executive summary, which means very short texts, everything on one page to be understood at a glance. And then the generation global village, everything is international and people come from different language areas which have often problem already of, with a, a foreign language, mainly English, and therefore need something that helps understand without language, but just with uh, visual language. So what we tried in particular with regard to European Union law, we tried to picture in a way the blueprint as a blueprint of a book of a, of a house and then when taking the metaphor the four of a house one needs to understand which floors there are but also how they are connected and this is particularly uh, easy made 
with a graphic depiction. So we start we started with a some charts charts of in format A4. We printed them in the shape of a book. In the meantime, we have the fifth edition and uh, the current edition is from 2020. We also have in addition a web presence, a web companion with it, but we are coming to that later on. Then we have to the book, we have an additional book as, which has text in it, just in a way to glue together the different visualizations. So the one part, the main part, has basically graphics. With it, as I mentioned, text that helps bringing together Well, bringing together also exercises to control what whether understanding has been correct. Let's take an example of one of these charts. So these are really boxes, figures, a blueprint. For the students, we have at the beginning of every of this page, one might uh, just see them as a web page. We have a short sentence, which then helps the students or the lawyer who wants to understand a certain area of EU law, um, understand what is the essence and also uh, giving an opportunity to repeat in a way. We have, as a different type of graphics, we have these decision trees. This is particularly helpful in uh, areas where there is a, uh, a, a follow of decisions to be made. Uh, and it's also uh, useful uh, in practice, as I discovered as an attorney, that I could ask clients where exactly they are already in their process and how advanced is their thinking and then putting virtually the finger on a specific issue. While this all looks rather light, we also made sure that it's still a scientific work, having extensive tables with all the necessary uh, references to legal texts, which is uh, primary sources, secondary law, but also soft law and whatever. As for the implementation, just to explain a little bit how the graphic aspects came into play. In particular, we made sure we always use a coherent structure, which also helps then later on for translations. To give you an idea, there is also on one part of it a Hungarian translation. We also have part of uh, Polish translation, they all come in the same manner based on a common style guide. To show you how it looks in detail, this is really some kind of a cookbook, how to translate um, any of these charts. So it would beautifully be possible to have Spanish charts, just needs some translation work, but actually the 
guide would already be there. Then we use different elements, pictures, pictograms, and we also make sure that it helps the memory, the brain, through different graphic elements. For particularly important issues, such as for European law, the coming into being of the current treaty, we use particularly um, obvious pictures. For authors, we make sure that with shadows, according strictly to the style guide, we have some landscape in the, for the brain to memorize what is important and what is not. So for example, we have the element of a topic block as a title. We have a certain statement. We have statements, variations, and examples. They all have their different uh, meaning and therefore also a different graphic uh, defined depiction. We use it in particular in our, for academic teaching. And here I think Krista Tobler may come uh, uh, into play and explain how she is using it for her teaching at the University of Leiden. Thank you so much. I use it in uh, quite a lot of my academic teaching. And uh, what you see on this sheet is the different ways how you can do it. And in the next sheet, I will explain why we have found it useful to use charts in academic uh, teaching. Well, first of all, you can use it as a complementary teaching material. Um, and to that, I will come back in a moment. That means you may have a textbook in a given field, but then in order to visualize, you may need, in addition to the textbook, you may use these charts. It is something you can use also for academic presentations, graphical elements in PowerPoint presentations, for example, illustrations in publications, work ordered by companies or institutions. For example, in my capacity as a senior expert in the Equality Law Network, of the European Commission, I have been asked to write a number of thematic reports on different issues, such as, for example, indirect discrimination in the social field. And there you can use these charts in order to make things visible. Jacques, can I ask you to go to the next sheet, please? Now, for the teaching, to focus especially on the, the role in teaching, I teach a lot of international classes. That means you have people who come, for example, to the University of Leiden, where I am at the moment, from all over the world to do a one-year specialized course. And this means that these people are challenged in different ways. Not only have they left their homelands and come to a different land with a different culture, a different language, a different teaching language, a wholly different teaching culture. And what we have found is that, especially at the beginning, for many students, it is simply too much to face all of this. And if they then also have to read what you see in the second point, uh, classic textbooks of European Union law, which are easily more than a thousand pages of pure text, just a thousand pages of text, 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 text. If you then have to find the structure in that text, that may be a challenge. We tell our students that ideally, if they are visual types, they would actually make their own charts. They would eventually be able to think themselves on how to best present their knowledge. But at the beginning, we see that many of our students are really grateful for being given the charts book and using the charts book also in class in order to explain the structure, the basics, behind a certain issue. For example, in European Union law, the law on the internal market, free movement of goods, free movement of persons, services, capital, there's a certain structure behind it. And with the charts, you can easily show that. You can have a chart on what is the relevant legislation. You can have a chart on to what issues does this particular law apply, the scope question. 
You may have a chart on what does free movement mean? And you may have a chart on what are the derogations provided for under European Union law. And in this way, you break things down. I must say that in this part of the charts book, the charts use a bit less visualization in the sense of pictures, but it uses structure to present things in a structured way. And I hear a lot from the students that they are very, very grateful for that. And at a later, later stage in their studies, they may actually begin to do charts themselves. So we have been, <coughs> excuse me, I, I have a rather a cold. That's also why I'm not going to talk too much. We have been on the second point, uh, the classic legal education, in order to help with these many, many, many pages of traditionally just text that is typical for the law. But you can also use it in other types of education. Uh, at Basel University, my other position, I work for an interdisciplinary program where we have a lot of students who come from different fields and then do an interdisciplinary study program. And for them, if they have to do legal courses, the challenge is also simply to be new to the field of law. So it could also be very helpful for these kinds of people to work with a more structured approach. So interdisciplinary education, mixed education, non-legal education, very often in modern studies in the Bologna system, the students are actually obliged to take certain courses from outside their actual field. So you may get a student of forestry all of a sudden in your law course or of philosophy or whatever it may be. I see that quite regularly. And these people as well are grateful for having something that breaks down these thousands of pages of text into something that speaks to them on a different level, more on the structural level, to some extent on the visual level. I will hand back to Jacques Picklinger at this point and not bother you too much with my coughing. Uh, I may perhaps come in later again um, if there's anything to be added. Thank you. Good. And th thank you, uh, Christa Tobler, for uh, this. I will continue with just switching to the legal practice uh, where I use it with a uh, great benefit is in uh, showing structures in an area of which the other, well, the, the other party knows maybe the basics, but then adding on top. It's also used, as I see, by colleagues to in continued professional education to brush up. And then similar to uh, teaching in an academic way to non-lawyers, it is also typical for an attorney to having to explain uh, legal concepts not details, but at least the concepts to clients, and there it is very useful as well. Now, let me just give you an example um, that I now that is now just very new, namely the EU digital strategy. That is a rather complicated exercise, is still fully in the making, and therefore in my opinion, is particularly well suited to be um, supported by in teaching or explaining by the charge method. Actually, I prepared this following chart uh, for a workshop I held at the uh, University of Leiden for students from approximately 40% EU background, so they knew some EU law, 40% Asian that were not well versed with it and 20 the rest of the world. And so a very disparate audience that needed a common ground for further discussion. And what's even more of a problem is in, in this particular field with the EU digital regulation that even while preparing a course, things might change again and uh, this is easily done by this. We then distributed the PDF as uh, that's how this, uh, the chart as a PDF, open access, and in particular also 
um, use it to make um, even officials understand. So I'm coming from Switzerland, Swiss officials not being in the EU to understand how this all works. So I can use it for different areas. So how does it look like? If we go start from the beginning, it looks rather odd, but it has the great advantage that I am not bound by A4. I can make it as large as it is, since distribution will be electronic, which then can be zoomed in and out. So one big advantage over just normal writing and printing. Then, as, as I tried to explain at the very beginning, it's much about mapping a, a certain area. So if I just take the overview, one sees that there is one common central strategy, mainly now for the European Union, the digital single market, which also somehow depends from input or from uh, from uh, previous works by other by other um, organizations such as the OECD or the Council of Europe and then I think this is the the nice thing just take the example of artificial intelligence which everybody's talking about right now data protection and data and data regulation so the regulation on data as such so it's rather helpful to show here to the students or who were, or clients how close certain areas are so moving back again on this whole area of digital regulation we can zoom in and show how certain topics are intertwined and the audience or the user now in my uh, experience they suddenly gather things that were not so obvious before what is we also see it now coming back to what I uh, tried to explain before that we have some style elements it in it in it that uh, repeat themselves. So here on this chart in particular, we have certain areas which are already in force. So, I, for example, we have the GDPR. We just see the end uh, of it, or we see that certain areas which are printed in bold, depicted in bold, are already in force. And others, for example, the data, EU Data Act, are not in force yet. So intuitively, one realizes what big areas there are, what other areas there are. And while using the blue ones, these are links that, when clicking on it directly, lead to the relevant texts. So once again, essential, and maybe I can finish with that. Um, mapping is good, but it must be done in a coherent and meaningful way so that there is a persistent use. I think that's it for my presentation for the moment. I'm happy to take any question. And the same is, of course, true also for Krista Tobler, if she has refound her voice. Well, so <clears throat> I, I'm going to say something. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beglinger and Professor Tobler for sharing your, your expertise and your work uh, with us. Uh, it's been incredible how these charts and these mappings applied no, all, not only to your work as consultants, but also as lawyers as we have seen and also in the academic context and not only for the students of law, but also for any other uh, subject, which uh, I think it's it's something amazing. And I'm going to finish saying something because we are 
uh, a bit uh, behind of our schedule. And it is amazing how it looks like all this mapping. I mean, yes, this is the complexity of law, but with these mappings makes things much easier for the for the users. So thank you, thank you very much for being with us this evening already, and and for as I said, sharing all your knowledge and expertise in this uh, to close this international conference that we held in the Univers Universidad Cardenal Herrera. Thank you very much. Great pleasure. Thank you. It was a pleasure participating. Thank you.